Our last video of Earth Science is on El Nino and La Nina. We want to know the environmental changes that occurs and the effects that result from this El Nino or La Nina, typo, my bad, or El Nino Southern Oscillation, sometimes also just called ENSO. So it takes uh, place in the Pacific Ocean, um, and during these events we see changes to the rainfall and wind and ocean circulation, and we see these patterns shift from the east of the Pacific Ocean and the west of the Pacific Ocean and then back again. And it's very complicated as far as like why it begins. Uh, so you don't have to know that. You just have to know um, how it occurs and then what are the resulting effects. Okay. So to understand El Nino and La Nina, you really need to understand upwellings. So upwellings occur when a surface wind pushes water off of um, coastal water. So when it does that, it kind of creates like a little empty space. And then what happens to fill that empty space, water rises up from below the surface, deep, deep down in the ocean. And that's good because down there in the deep ocean, we have all of these nutrients that are um, that have been accumulating there from things that have died and then come to rest on the bottom of the ocean and they're decomposed and so all of this cold water has plenty of nutrients in it and so as this water gets pushed up it takes with it all these nutrients and then all these nutrients get brought up to where the sunlight is and where sunlight is you have phytoplankton and phytoplankton are little photosynthesizers and they are the bottom of the food chain so if you have a lot of upwelling you have a lot of phytoplankton, you have then a lot of zooplankton that eat the phytoplankton, you have a lot of little fish, and then the medium fish, and then the big fish, and then the people that eat those fish, and the birds that eat those fish. Um, so it's really, really essential to the um, to these communities to have this upwelling. So, like I said, it takes place in the Pacific Ocean. Under normal circumstances, we have trade winds that come off of South America flowing west, um, so towards the west of the Pacific Ocean. And then as it does that, it brings with it all that moist air, and so the, the west have, has, a lot of, uh, has a lot of rain. We also see the warmer water, so warm water, all that stuff, like lots of moisture. And then, because these, this wind is blowing uh, the water off of the surface, it creates an upwelling. And so upwelling means you have a lot of phytoplankton, and a lot of fish, a lot of birds. But then during El Nino, something has happened where now those trade winds that are blowing off of South America aren't as strong. Um, so they weaken. Sometimes they can even reverse. It's not shown in this picture, but um, they can start blowing the other direction. So once that happens, it's kind of like when you're a kid and you're playing in the bathtub and you slosh all the water to one side. Well, this is similar to all that water now sloshing back. So all of that warm water sloshes back to the South America side. And when that happens, we have all this hot water that's suppressing that upwelling. So with less upwelling, we have less nutrients. Less nutrients means less phytoplankton. Less phytoplankton means less fish, which means our bird population also um, drops. And that also affects the people that eat the fish and rely on that, that um, ecosystem. But then also we see the changes in weather patterns. So now over in the, in the west, it's more dry. But in the east now, that's where all that rain is because now that's where the warm, moist water is. Warm, moist air, I'm sorry. Um, and I'm not sure if I mentioned it in words, but I think there's a question in your notes it has to do with why the why oceans are being close to warm water means precipitation. Well, that's because more precipitation is going to, or more warm water, I mean, we would have more evaporation. More evaporation leads to more precipitation, and so you have more rain. And of course, there's a lot of other weather conditions that occur 
during these El Nino La Nina events. Um, but let's say the major thing to know is just the more precipitation over here. And also when we talk about these these trends, we're not saying that this area is not going to get any rain or vice versa during the normal conditions, this area is not going to get any rain. It's just saying that um, when we compare them, this area is getting more rain than this, or it's like relative to what it normally does, it's getting more rain than usual. So then La Nina is kind of like the pendulum swings back, but then it just swings back way too far. So now we see that as that oscillates back, let's get it, the El Nino oscillation. Um, as that pendulum swings back, it goes way too far and overcorrects. So now we have super, super strong winds blowing off South America and then pushing all that hot water towards the west. And so we have a lot more rain in the west, um, even stronger red upwelling. Um, it's also cooler than normal, or drier than normal. We've got the phytoplankton back, the fish back, and all that. All right, so that's basically what you have to know. As a summary, describe the environmental changes and effects that result from El Nino or La Nina events. The end.